back to episode number 348. Today, me and my amazing co-host, Jonathan Denwood, are going to be talking about Real Estate Webmasters, a company that we don't spend a lot of time talking about publicly, but one that we do spend a lot of time talking about privately. So today, we're going to open up um, our thoughts, opinions, and views. Um, it, co it corresponds to a post that I've done, and I uh, was just telling John that I held on to the video that goes along with that post for two years before launching it. And that's because I got uh, a view of a beta type of CRM that they were working on, their old CRM. And at the time I had a lot to say about the two. Um, but before we dive into that, uh, in case there happens to be um, people that haven't been introduced to you yet, Jonathan, would you do us all the honor of uh, telling us uh, who you are and why you're uh, doing this podcast? Yeah, sure, Rob. I'm the founder of Mel Wright, mel-wright.com. We build beautiful real estate websites in WordPress, semi or full custom. Plus, we offer a suite of digital online tools to help you generate digital leads. Back over to you, Rob. Beautiful. My name is Robert Newman. I'm the founder of Inbound REM. I'm a real estate SEO expert, and uh, I've been doing a lot of things in the uh, real estate industry for about the last 14, 15 years or so. So without any further ado, we're going to, we're going to dig into real estate webmasters or real estate webmasters is also, it's really the only other company. I'm an SEO guy first and Morgan, um, the guy that owns that company who's in from Canada, he used to be called the SEO guy. Did you know that John? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Okay. Well, there's a little interesting tidbit. Uh, when he was very young, like in his early 20s, many years ago, like two decades ago, he was called the SEO guy, and he got a start in SEO, and uh, he I'm, stumbled. I'm called, in. I'm called something, but not the SEO guy, Rob. Oh, well, well, John, we're not, we're not going to tell everybody about your little big daddy, you know, tag here. You know, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna save that for another time. Right. All right. So, in all seriousness, so we. So, so he was used to be called the SEO guy. So he was, his roots were in SEO and he's been doing SEO and building SEO um, sites for decades. And over the years, uh, for a long time, he had no competition. Now he does. But during that time, he developed a, a reputation as a guy who built a, a product that actually works. And also, is a, unfortunately, is a very difficult business to do business with. Um, which is documented many times over, which I think you were sharing with me, John, on, in public spaces with p opinion shared about his um, his uh, customer service policies. Is that is that right? Yes, folks. Rob's a little bit worried. Rob's a bit anxious. I can tell Rob's anxious. I'm not so anxious. Um, <laughs> So um, I'm prepared to put my foot into it just as normal, as, <laughs> as, as diplomatic as a brick in a window, aren't I, Robert? Uh, so um, you've sampled that, haven't you, Robert? And you just grin and bear, don't you, Rob? Um, so <laughs> um, great product, does what, you know, most people, you know, very expensive, but you not always, but... Um, you, if you you get what you're paying for, but not always, but it does do seemingly it does do what it's supposed to do. Um, you you will have a, a better um, idea of that than me. Um, the problem the problem is not the product. The problem is the company and the founder. The problem is if you do the most basic. Google search, the there is reams and reams of bad reviews. And it's not about the product. It's about the attitude of the founder and his staff. And we've had this discussion before on this show. And as real estate agents, you understand this yourself. No matter how focused you are in providing good quality service, it is impossible to please everybody. It just is not. Everybody's got different expectations. Some are fair, some are not. Some are a mixture. 
So you are, even if you're a reasonably fair, honest person, you're going to upset a few people. This isn't the problem. The problem is the volume of bad reviews that this particular team gets. But I don't know them as intimately as you do. So maybe I will throw it <laughs> over to you to give some insights on why that might be. Okay, well, since we are public and and I don't do... I treat other business owners the way that I myself like to be treated. So it was a certain amount of respect. Um, having said that, Morgan has the, the uh, most challenging reputation of any founder that I know inside the entire real estate space. I've heard hundreds of stories from clients directly who've worked for him, and I, I'm not over-exaggerating. Over the years, I, I really do think it's been hundreds. Uh, court cases where he's sued people. Uh, as a matter of fact, within the last week, I had a, a Morgan story from an old customer who's long since fired real estate webmasters. And uh, he said he was invited to a trade show in Canada. And uh, the trade show, I think, was to come and look at a real estate webmasters product. Uh, he, he thought that he was being invited out as a consumer. Okay, but it turned out that Morgan wanted him to pay his air for basically just invited him to pay for his own trip to, to go to a conference and then look at his his products. And that's just one of many, many, many things. The ones that I don't even want to get into, there's litigious and people getting twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars taken out of their accounts without them even understanding that that money was going to be withdrawn. Uh, real estate webmasters executing it. Real estate webmasters is the only company in the entire real estate industry that has like a 25 page TOC when you sign with them. That is 25 pages of legalese. Can I, you... can I ask a question? Yeah. You're obviously you're, you're in the same niche area. Yeah. Um, but you strike me at the three years plus that we've been doing this podcast together, a, a reasonably fair and balanced individual. Mm -hmm. So you're painting a, quite a dark picture here. As you were drawing this picture, and this might be in this, but I've had, I do another podcast and I have had letters sent to me. Uh -huh. This might be the first time of this particular podcast that I receive a letter, right? But it is what it is, right? Right. Um, and good luck to him because um, I know I've already got my reply already written, right? Uh, okay. um, um, what intrigues me is that they've been in business for quite a period of time and they are highly successful business and mm -hmm. they have some of the biggest names in real estate yeah. as clients. Yeah. If the picture you have drawn is all out there on the internet, it, you're, it's not hidden. It's all out there. Sure. If I had a reputation like that, I don't think my business would still be in business. That is the puzzling thing, Robert. Not really. For a very long time, uh, Morgan stood with no competition inside the real estate industry. And he was really the only guy building um, SEO friendly w real estate websites. He, he absolutely either he has people on staff or he himself understood how to build a good product that's going to perform well in the search engines. At, for a very long time, John, he was the only guy that did. Now, some of the biggest real estate websites in the world are on his platforms and he upgrades them. He, he force upgrades them. He does all sorts of things that, as I know, quite a few of his top, top, top accounts and they're they hate his policies, but they're locked into his product. And so they suffer through with all the forced upgrades and everything else and the high prices and the back, the, the delays in service. And some of these clients are high enough up on the food chain that they don't deal with as much of that as some of his other clients do. But even having said all that, 
there is a sum of these accounts, to be fair, make many, many, many millions of dollars off yes. the real estate websites. Okay. Yeah. Some of the numbers that we're talking about are very large. I would say that if you were to look at the top 50 real estate websites in the entire country, I'd say real estate webmasters has probably built 25 of them. So that is a very large number. And when so, you're big, so just sorry, to recap, ahead. You, what you're saying is the product actually does work, that him and his team do know what they're doing. It's just his business practices. Can we, before we go for our break, we've got five minutes. Can we, if you don't, if you're okay with this, can you give a quick outline of what they actually offer roughly? Sure. And we've got about five minutes before we go for our break. Well, we're going to have to do it, break it into two sections, but yes. currently with their newest release, uh, which I forget what they're calling, it's like command or something like that. I forget what they're calling. They have a brand new CRM they've been working on for three years. Um, I showed a very early beta version of it in my review on inboundrem.com. Uh, they're in a much later version of it right now. Uh, they're moving in the direction, John, of doing team websites. They're moving from having <laughs> focused on branded websites for a little while. Uh, Frederick England and many of the other luxury agents they were targeting, they were charging a small fortune for those sites. Now they're moving to a per seat um, CRM website product that is very different than what they've done in the past. They are actually charging far less for the new installation. And instead they're going for far more on the monthly membership side. Are they, going, are they going for high, higher end, more SEO focused kind of real geeks model then? Um, I think that they're going for the kind of business that KV Core and other systems right. have really locked up. I think they're going for the big team business, actually. Right. If I if I had to put my... Boomtown? Boomtown huh? kind, yeah. kind of level? Yeah, I think, I think that they've they've looked at how much business these other real estate website companies make doing a very simple kind of straightforward idea. The, th the problem that real estate webmasters has, the problems that I have is that we're building custom products to do well with SEO, to do really well with SEO. You usually do have to build customer, semi-customer solutions. It's very time intensive as a provider. Less time intensive is building a core website that kind of looks similar across the board that works well, works fast, has a nice CRM, but you can install 50, 100, 200, 300 agents. And, and then as, as a provider, you're making your service fee and you're making a per seat agent fee as well. It adds up very quickly when you have clients that have five, six, 700 agents. And actually real estate webmasters has clients that have thousands of agents. So when you start looking at it from that perspective, they've actually got accounts where there's $100,000 a month sitting right on the table, like just right there. All they have to do is build the product to go get the, the business. And I think that's what they've done. Right. Um, understandable in business terms. So, right, I've, maybe it's time to go our break. But, and then maybe you can talk about the existing product and why it give some insights about why it's been so effective sure. and some, because I think our listeners would be really interested in your knowledge about why it's been so successful and what, why it's so different than the present product, not the new one that we you've just outlined, how it's managed to be in SEO terms ahead of the pack. As they, sure. As you... I will do that. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, Thanks for sticking with us so far. Uh, we've we've started to open up a can of worms that is uh, collo 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 uh, collectively known as real estate webmasters. We're deep in it. Um, when we come back, I'm going to tell a little bit, as John has asked, about what the product is now, what the evolution of the product has been. This has been the one competitor I've deeply tracked over my 14 years in the industry because, as I already said, for a long time, they were the only guys in the, in, in the entire country and Canada that really knew what they were doing for SEO, which made them interesting to me. Without any further ado, we'll be right back. Three, 
two, one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in episode 348. We are now talking about what is quite likely one of the more successful real estate marketing companies in the entire North American area. Uh, real Estate Webmasters probably has, I am extrapolating that they have about half of the top 50 real estate websites um, that produce business uh, under their names. They certainly have half of the websites that um, hold on. Yes. Uh, they certainly have uh, website. They certainly have a lot of the websites that perform well in the search engines. All right. So what they built in the past is they, they took a little, they've done a lot in their evolution, John. And I don't know if they're selling all of these products anymore. I know that they focus on their newest release very heavily. That has always been mm -hmm. their business model. Morgan produces something new and then they, they focus on it heavily in their marketing. Mm -hmm. And I know that they, that they are doing that now with their latest release, which is absolutely positively a very slick, very mobile first, very fast, search site now where they seem to be going away from is their past search sites used to really focus heavily on a content management system i haven't seen either i haven't seen as much of a focus on that i think that the direction that they're going is a more limited in scope search site and they're abandoning the idea of higher quality um websites with tons and tons of content. I think they're headed away from that direction. I'm not saying you couldn't do it if you didn't want to. I'm saying that their platform doesn't seem to be as aimed at that as for it the reason the for the reasons we outlined in the first half of the show that they, they really you seem to be suggesting that they're they're trying to um, encroach and become a competitor to the likes of Boomtown. Correct. And and I don't know if they're defuncting their previous CRMs, it doesn't make much sense, though one of the things that Morgan has always done that really hasn't made much sense to me is he forces people to upgrade into whatever his newest, latest thing is. And, he, and when I say force, he simply sends an email saying, hey, I'm not going to support your old well, product. I, anymore. I know. I can tell you why. Hit, hit us. Well, it's the cost of main maintenance, you know, the cost of having two to three different versions of a platform um it soon spirals out of control and the co code base to keep the code base you know have like two to three major separate platforms web-based platforms quasar apps and have three different cold code bases and to maintain them and keep them bug free will rapidly become a nightmare okay so there's a solid business reason. So Morgan tends to go from one product to another and just force upgrade everybody into to each product. The challenge that I've seen is that as, as my review points out, I got access to one of the old CRMs and it was definitely better than the new one, especially if you're focused on content. Okay, no doubt about it. I said it clearly in my review. I'll say it here. If you were focused on content, the old CRM was better than the new one and the old one is gone. The one that I reviewed is no longer being produced or supported by real estate webmasters. So it's a thing of the past, but it was better than all the versions of the new one that I've seen so far. Now, what Morgan might have done that I have not yet looked at is he may have upgraded the team and leadership capabilities. If he got his hands on some uh, like a view of the Boomtown CRM, but like the 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 version of the CRM that I reviewed did not have a lot of dashboards or functionality or filters or all the things that you look for when you're looking for a team system. And Morgan is not like he usually either he has really great people working for him or he himself has a pretty good eye. But either way, he usually does produce products that have the right focus. Like he usually understands what the objective of the product needs to be. And he builds it well. He had a very good tracking system built into his old CRMs that was tracking the birth to the death of the user. For a long time, he was one of the precursors who really focused on IDXs before 
IDX was really a thing. Before everybody understood what the power of reorganizing the information from the MLS was, Morgan understood that and built one of the first really highly productive IDXs that existed. He's got a very, and by productive, so everybody understands what I mean. I mean a IDX that was producing leads. Some of what Morgan came up with, I honest to God think that Trulia stole from him. He's always been very forward thinking. That little heart, you know that little heart, John, that everybody loves? Mm -hmm. I think that if, if he wasn't the first guy to build it, he was one of the first. He was one of the first people to come up with the idea of harding a product and then making that part. So of your I think idea. what you're saying for a number of years, he really um, drove some of the ideas that have become established around how you turn the IDX feed into a site that actually converts a possible lead in a visitor into a digital lead through Correct. the. Correct. So, so he's done a lot of very interesting things in the past. And when you look around at their large catalog of sites, you obviously have customers that have been basically thumbing their nose at Morgan because I do see old versions of his site up all over the place all the time. And that just means that despite him making his best effort to try to force them to upgrade, they simply haven't upgraded. Now, that does mean that their old site is probably unsupported, but it also, as you and I well know, could mean that they're going years without having something major break on the site. And until they do, they'll mm. keep using the old site. Well, it's, it's obvious that they don't use WordPress or they're not using WordPress multi-site, you know, because they wouldn't have that option if they were utilizing, because every site would be updated because it's a centralized platform. So... My understanding it is a truly SaaS based, custom coded based platform, not based. Because um, I think we discussed this with Boomtown, Boomtown, and I think I'm not sure if this is still the case, but when they started, they built it on WordPress multi site, did they not? Um, they, yes, they still did. They still do. Oh, it's, it's all built, yeah. Um, that's why you can't get the custom designs because um yeah um they strike me um yeah the um they're very similar in what you said about them to another people that you love curator uh, um <laughs> another company that you got from mem you got from from words to say but their superpower was their facebook marketing where um uh, webmaster their superpower was seo but culturally they seem to have a similar culture would do you think i'm on the right path uh who has a similar culture i'm sorry um curator curator uh well there's some differences yeah. i think the curator is um who knows what's going on with morgan but uh, curator is has a leader that's been diagnosed with bipolar problem and, and their their organization is you know that i wouldn't say that they're i'd say they're they're disorganized and it comes from a leadership top-down yeah. perspective i i would actually say that all the things that i've described about that, Morgan. Oh, thank you for that thank you for that robert that'd be the second letter i'm gonna receive to next week sure Sure. Well, we might as well um, we might as well just go for it and get all you know get it done and over with. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that um, with more with my perception of what's going on at Real Estate Webmasters is is you have this very very talented guy, but unfortunately, all that talent, all this success, every time I see stories of Morgan, see see you know written stuff online it's like it, it's like the kid that got picked on at school that just learned to be pugilistic and now just he's the big kid in the block and he just punches everybody because he can i don't know what happened with morgan he's definitely got the talent but he also definitely carries a lot of chips on his shoulder and acts at all times with that hmm. that Whatever. So it is. you you got an individual that's very talented, knows what he's doing, a company, but
but you've also you're going to be dealing with attitude massive and and it could be a legal risk so i do actually agree with your ultimate assessment there is some success to be had with real estate webmasters but you're going to have to be a self-starter not rely on them um they will build you a good website you should never ever expect that you're going to get great service out of them if you ever run across morgan's desk you must assume automatically that you will you will as a customer you will lose full stop and the only way out of a conversation with him is going to be you pay them whatever they want that's that's the thing you're going to pay them whatever they want now if you're making enough that will not matter oh. there, there are plenty of his customers that make so much money that he can charge them whatever the hell he wants to and they're still pulling out a pretty good anywhere from a good to great roi so i just want to be clear about that and there's that that's that's just the power of exceptional results which they have managed to get so um there's that but ultimately like buyer beware for sure and and this idea where now morgan is focused on brokers with big teams if i was a broker with a big team this would be one of the most cautious decisions i would ever make because now you've got three or four hundred agents that theoretically might have to interact with real estate webmasters customer service and boy oh boy are you really rolling the dice on whether or not that's going to work out well for you and your team now if you're the only point of contact you've listened to reviews like this you've read the reviews just like john says you think that you can you can work with a very egocentric leader who almost for sure you will interact with at some point because morgan has the tendency to want to talk to all the major accounts that he takes on i've heard this over and over again you're not going to be dealing with his employees exclusively you will end up running across his desk and so when that happens you must you have that thought of faced with somebody who's always going to be my way the highway even though i'm the customer um how am I going to handle that? Now, if you're one of those people, here's a great analogy, John. You might like this one. I've been to a couple of sushi restaurants that are traditional Japanese restaurants, restaurants by very well-known or famous chefs. When you walk into the restaurant, they kind of treat you like you are graced to be in the presence of this great chef. The chef tells you what he's going to, going to serve you. You do not have a say in it. You sit there, smile shut up eat what they give you to eat and drink what they give you to drink now typically speaking if you can do all that you are getting a really excellent meal but if you happen to ask a question that they don't like they will either ignore you or yell at you that is my uh, analogy that, that would go down with me like a bucket of sick to be <laughs> that would go down that would not go down i i couldn't go to a restaurant like that to be true right and here's and here's the final part For those places that i've been john they've usually been two to three hundred dollars minimum yeah. per person so not only are you is that the attitude but you are paying and they're highly those. successful and they're highly successful as well oh god yeah in each one of these cases it was it was a major event we had to pull strings to get reservations like it's like so so for those of you listening to the podcast if that's your kind of experience if you like if you like all of that if is then perhaps real estate webmasters might be a good fit for you um but if any if you're like john and you're saying hey that would go down like a bucket of sick absolutely positively lutely <laughs> not like i'm t i'm i am i rarely john's worked with me a long time i rarely say like really strong black and white state that i'm telling you if you know that your personality is hey i'm the customer i kind of like to be treated like one no did not not the not the right company regardless of everything we said about results i see it i see it as a more of a of a team i'm hiring somebody and we work as an effective team i give them money they give them this their speciality i listen 
you know, I don't argue. I bring up questions because I have concerns. We work in a cooperative. I understand they're there to make money. As long as I feel that they're doing their best to try and make me money. Um, but when I get somebody that wants to dominate and make me feel that they're doing me all such a big favour, it just rubs me up the wrong way, Robert. Right. Just... And and you were, you would not be alone. And and then when when people have tried to exercise their rights, real estate webmasters also has. And I'm I, I want to close on this, but everybody, you really need to hear this. Real estate webmasters, not only do they have that 25 page contract, which if you do decide to sign with him, you need to read every single word. Everybody hear me because some of their contract terms are not normal or standard. One of which is they have the complete and total right upon the cancellation of the contract to reach into your bank account and take out the full contract value. So if you have four more remaining years on the contract that you've signed for $500 a month, they will hit you all at once for thirty or forty thousand dollars out of your account and there is nothing that you can do to get that money back it is gone no well really if you sign a contract that gives them the legal right to do that you've got a bit of a problem haven't you right and and i guys and gals and everybody listening there's other equally as egregious things about your data about what they have the rights to do to your website. It's not technically your website, it's theirs. They can make changes upon it at will, even though it's your site. Morgan has done that in the past where he doesn't like blogs that people have written and has taken them down. Oh okay. Oh my God. So I need to be clear with you, everybody listening, this is not your website. You don't own it. Real Estate Webmasters does. So and and they are one of the few providers out there that actually egregiously take advantage of their terms and conditions so you and and they have more of them than anybody else by many iterations so you need to really carefully read their contract when you get it and then really decide because some of those things that sound outlandish in in most people like me and john probably don't usually have to rely upon our terms but <laughs> they do that's why they have 25 pages of them. And, and, and some of them are nutty, 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 nutty. You pay for everything. If you bounce a payment, you pay like a thousand dollar penalty. Like the list just keeps going on and on and on. Just be careful when you, when you sign anything with them. So, and, and pay attention to what you're signing. And that I think is a good place to close the show up. Um, if yeah, I, think, I, I think we better, I think we better close now, Rob. Actually, right. So if if so, if anybody has any questions, especially for this company, go to my site inboundrem.com, message me on the contact form. I'd be happy to address any concerns, any questions. I've recommended them a handful of times to a handful of people, and and sometimes they come out ahead. So I want to be clear. It's just it's just definitely one of those decisions you need to really think through, especially in the middle of a turbulent economy. Because remember, hear what I said, it's a five year contract that you cannot get out of, all right? So um, having said that, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show. John, as usual, you've been a brilliant foil. You probably got me in a little bit of trouble on this show because once the genie was out of the bottle, it was definitely out of the bottle. I knew, I knew, I knew. I had watched watched your vid your video, which is, on Rob's channel, on his own YouTube channel, and I had read his. I knew where this conversation was going to go. I think we, you know, I'm. I might get a bit of flack for this. We might get a bit of flack. Um, I'm quite happy. I think we we have attempted to be scrupulously fair in this conversation, Rob. As do I. As do I. So, John, uh, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, since I've now Again, in a very unusual way, I've said three times how they get a hold of me. How do, how do they get a hold of you, Doug? It's really simple, folks. Go to the mail-right.com. 
Um, you can book a chat with me or Adam, my co-founder, um, and you can have a free consultation. It's a big button that says book a chat. And we'd be more than happy to give you any advice or consultation. And um, we're totally happy with that. Over to you, Rob. All right. Uh, listen, everybody, John and I so very much appreciate your time and attention. John's been re reaching out with uh, incredibly diligently to get some guests. And we've got quite a few lined up from what I can see. Some really exciting guests coming up in the future. You're going to definitely want to be uh, tuning into the show. I'm not going to announce anything yet because the show... We never know until the actual day of the show whether or not they're really going to be here, but I'm telling well, you. One thing, one thing I'm sure about, uh, I can see in the future, we're definitely not going to get the founder and CEO of <laughs> Real Estate Web Masters on this show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right. And with that, John, why don't you take us off air? <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.